Let's we got. Let's go to our man, Mr. Daryl Martin at Apex Investing. Uh, Daryl Martin, we're kicking into fall, brother. What's going on? I know. Here it goes. We got some good volatility. Market's flying down, flying back up this morning. Doing great. How y'all doing? I'm doing, doing great, well, man. man. Doing great. Yeah, so, you know, September 4th, bottom line, beginning of fall. Starting it off. Starting it off. Before we know it, uh, well, from here to Thanksgiving, folks, you're going to have some real trading, you know, for about a week before Thanksgiving. And especially with coming off the summer where we had some trading, we're going to have the election coming in November, man. Yep. Don't, this is going to be all sorts of stuff getting, you, you know. Got, you, you got Twitter and uh, Facebook at the hearings this week. Okay. And, you know, my take is that both of them want lower price anyway, you know. I mean, this, so it'd be really intriguing watching this whole thing shake out. And how about we get a storm in the Gulf, right, in terms of commodities? And then yeah. we, have, we have trade deals going on with Forex, so it's going to be Forex, commodities, markets, I mean, totally. for sure. And, folks, if you haven't test-driven yet the Nadex platform, guess what? Kick off fall. Come over to our website, hit that baby, bring it up, uh, do the demonstration account. Bottom line is that you'll see how these defined option contracts trade. And don't forget, of course, what you do have, we're at the beginning of the month. So when we're talking Bitcoin, you have the weeklies as well as the monthlies out yeah, here. Yeah, and Bitcoin you know. with some action as well. Oh, it had. Don't it, count it, out it, Bitcoin. It, That's it right. It had that action, man. Totally. So what are you, what are you thinking uh, coming into the fall? What are you thinking out here? Well, um, basically, I mean, y'all covered the bases right there. So with all the storms and all the trade balances and everything else, we're going to have commodities moving. We're going to have indices moving. You know, with the elections, that's going to move things around. Um, just this week, um, you know, we have also we had the you know rate statement from Australia last night. We got Canada popping this morning. Yeah. Um, on their manufacturing numbers, they're going to have their rate statement, I believe, tomorrow. So we have the rate statement coming out. We got NFP this Friday, which always makes for a fun trading day. Yeah, payroll. So for sure. uh, it's going to be a fun trading week. And you know, folks, don't forget. You can, so you can trade currencies also on the Nadex platform. And this is, you know, I would say really important, like where we are right now, because you hear all the news. Meaning, it's just not news. It's it's factual. The emerging markets are getting smoked. Okay, the currencies in the emerging markets are getting smoked. So when I look at it. Even fundamentally, it's like, well, guess what, folks? If this dollar keeps going up, now, picture the dollar index, okay? It's not just the dollar index. The dollar index is laying out here at 95, testing, you know, last week's uh, high. But what you have is the, it's, it's the actual correlation between the dollar versus um, the Argentina peso, versus the Mexican, versus the Brazilian real, versus the rupee. Um, these are the things that if this thing keeps getting stronger, we are going to have some heavy, um, well, you're going to have the volatility, but the real question is going to be, will you get the contagion? Because I can tell you, it's just laying there, man. You know, you only can grab so much wealth out of a country. And when, you just, your country, when your currency gets destroyed, you know, something's going to fly. And we certainly haven't seen the metals fly yet. <laughs> yeah, and metals that, as well this yeah, morning, right? Right, right, you know. Yeah. And how about, I was just yeah, looking at... Metals have been a little bit subdued lately for what else has been going on, so I am curious to see. No, that's my point, Daryl. Do you know what I mean? Which is like, hold it, man. Yeah. This is really weird. So, because if you... Picture if all of us were in one of those countries. It's like, your currency just got whacked, whether it's 10% or 50%. And it's like, okay, how are you covering yourself? You know? Sure. I mean... And this isn't new for many of these countries. They've been through it before. So it's like, okay, you know, why isn't there a bid? Isn't there a bid in the metals because there's no more money left to, to bid? You know? Yeah. Um, and, you know, exactly how much further can it go? Something's going on, right? Yeah. Because it's, it's been flirting with lower prices, oh, it seems like, as far as I can remember. And I know it's not, but, you know, for a long, is. extended last, period of hey, time. Hey, listen. Well, I mean, we broke down below 1,200 today, you know. Right. Seems sure. like it's want to stay down there right now. So. No, no, no. There's no doubt, man. There's no doubt. And, you know, when, when you take a look at it, my, my take on it is that it has to break, meaning that the dollar has to break it, because of the fact that the destruction across the world is so dramatic that the banks in general are going to get hit. Someone, someone's holding the bag out here, man. Do you know what I mean? It's like all that dollar-denominated debt, it's just not sitting in those countries. And there's $3.2 trillion Outside of the country, folks, that is in dollar-denominated debt, meaning it has to be paid back in U.S. dollars. That is, like, pretty intense. Uh, if, is if, that in Argentina? Is that what you're talking about, or Brazil? No, ev know. everywhere. <laughs> okay. $3.2 trillion in dollar-denominated debt is outside the country, meaning it has to be paid back. Okay. 
And every time the, the dollar gets stronger, that ups the bill dramatically. And sure. we're not talking by like percentages. We're yeah. talking about like 10, 15, 20 percent. Sure. You know, so yeah. when I look at that, it's like, okay, something's going to happen here. You know, and guess what? We're in the perfect time of the year for something to happen dramatically, meaning that Trump says, okay, we're going to start selling dollars, um, sure. you know. Yeah. And basically, you know, because if you want more manufacturing, guess what? We need cheaper dollars. Sure. So sure. We'll see where that baby shakes out. Yeah. The um, what are you thinking on, on the euro? What, do, what, do, what, what euro is right now? One fifteen forty three. Well, I think the big thing with the euro, just like it has been in a while, it really comes down to Brexit. Yeah. And um, I know Carney was talking about how twenty percent of the uh, the banks and the institutions don't even have a plan if there was not a Brexit. Like they're all planning for it. Okay. So um, you know, this whole there's just there's back and forth. You know, like you know it's going forward, but they keep flirting with the idea like it won't. And uh, I think that's just causing a lot of volatility for Europe. They can cause, you know, continue to cause volatility for, you know, trading, you know, uh, the British pound over there, the cable. And Boy, you know, that just makes both of those pairs, you know, a solid, you know, instrument to be uh, checking out on a consistent basis. That's volatility, totally. Oh, man. Imagine being, imagine being one of those co companies over there that, you know, you're doing business, whether it's in the euro or the pound, and you have to figure out, well, actually the pound. You have to figure out, uh, okay, you know, is this going to go or not go, and, and what is it going to do to my business? Yeah. You know, because just, yeah. just the uh, changing of currencies themselves um, and the, the movement yeah. of goods. I mean, that's why it was such a big deal, because it's not like you flip a switch and, and you just exit you know, right. the EU after that many trade deals and all, all of that that needs to be reconciled, and there's a lot more that goes into it in terms of uh, the borders and, and oh, so yeah. forth, so there's concessions, that, and they're really struggling to make a deal, so the market should be factoring in that type of risk. And I mean, when you look at the map, this is just like, you know, it's almost like New England, folks. It's so small over there. I mean, it's state by state, so it's sure. pretty intense when we're saying moving movement over the borders. It'd be like, you know, you're in Massachusetts and you can't bring something to Rhode Island. It's like, really? Right. It's only 45 minutes their products away. are flowing for yeah, sure. Yeah. Right. Pretty Apparently, I gotta say, 80% of their businesses have no plan that it doesn't happen. So like, they're just all like steaming forward like it's going to happen. Therefore, I mean, it's a lot of turmoil. 20% yeah, is actually you know, then, a large number for planning that it may not happen. But those are, of course, just going to be your biggest ones that are going to try to have a plan both ways. But. I, I was just saying, unfortunately, people have a habit of being like almost too optimistic you know optimism is a good thing yeah. but not when you're supposed to be managing risk and that's where it's like you better be managing that correctly i love it yeah cook and brother you have a great week safe week we look forward to speaking to next tuesday daryl hey man you have a great one thank, thank you very so much stay right there folks tommy and i come right back